President Trump, he comes out swinging and hard and absolutely hammers James Comey, he calling him a liar today and blasting Democrats and, of course, the destroy Trump media. Take a look at the president from earlier today. No collusion, no obstruction. He's a leaker. Yesterday uh, showed no collusion, no obstruction. Uh, we are uh, doing really well. That was an excuse by the Democrats. Frankly, uh, James Comey confirmed a lot of what I said, and some of the things that he said just weren't true. Who would like to ask? Should I take one of the killer networks that treat me so badly as fake news? And, and did he ask for a pledge of loyalty from you? That's another thing he said. No, he did not. So he said those things under oath. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of 100%. those events? 100%. Jay Seculo, Anthony Scaramucci, Greg Jarrett, Geraldo Rivera, Rona Romney McDaniel, Dr. Gina Loudon, Lou Dobbs are all here tonight with reaction. Plus, the propaganda media turns out to be dead wrong about the Trump Russia so called collusion and their conspiracy theories. And they have to admit they have been lying to you, the American people. Watch this. The assumption of the critics of the president, of his pursuers, you might say, is that somewhere along the line in the last year, the president had something to do with colluding with the Russians, something to do with the helping hand, encouraging them, feeding their desire to affect the election in some way. Some role they played, some conversation he had with Michael Flynn or Paul Manafort or somewhere. And yet what came apart this morning was that theory. Now we'll have much more on the massive media credibility crisis later tonight. But first, former FBI Director J. Edgar Comey has been exposed for what he really is, a snake who has slithered his way through Washington, D.C. and the swamp for decades. That is tonight's important opening monologue. All right, so as we learn from his testimony, James Comey is a cunning, calculated, manipulative, and self-serving political operative who is out for revenge after getting fired by President Trump for his disgraceful behavior as the head of the FBI. Now, tonight, we're going to lay out Comey's possible criminal conduct and the many double standards. Now, after testifying under oath that the president, members of the Trump administration, never asked him to stop the Russia investigation, James Comey still claimed that an alleged conversation with President Trump about Lieutenant General Michael Flynn left him so troubled, which prompted Democrat Dianne Feinstein to ask this very important question. Why didn't you stop and say, Mr. President, this is wrong. I cannot discuss this with you. It's a great question. Maybe if I were stronger, I would have. I was so stunned by the conversation that I just took it in. Maybe if he was stronger, he would have said no. Uh, that is just pathetic. What a pathetic excuse. Does anyone actually believe that? Now, keep in mind, Comey and his allies in the Washington, D.C. swamp, they have for decades created an image of the former FBI director as a champion of justice and a beacon of truth. Now, that explanation from Comey, that proves everything that you've been told about him is a farce. Now, the guy plays politics better than most politicians in D.C. And here's another thing. If Comey was so concerned about the president and told the attorney general, Jeff Sessions, oh, he didn't want to be left alone in the room with him, he's afraid, then why did Comey then take the president's calls after this allegedly had happened? By not coming forward, and we're putting the law right up on the side of the screen, James Comey, as we've been telling you, he may have violated 18 U.S. Code 4. Now, if Comey thought any of what he claims happened was wrong, then he had a legal obligation to immediately speak up, but he did not. Then there's the stunning admission from Comey that he gave his memo to a friend to actually leak to the New York Times. This is breathtaking. Watch this. Did you show copies of your memos to anyone outside of the Department of Justice? Yes. And to whom did you show copies? I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? No. Who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. This is beyond stu a stunning to me. The former head of the FBI, who's been outspoken about stopping leaks, admitted he has now intentionally leaked information 
because he wants, he thinks, they need a special counsel, which just so happens to be led by his longtime friend, Robert Mueller. Now, it also makes you wonder if Comey was so quick to leak that information, was he behind any of the other leaks of the deep state that were meant to selectively pick and to damage President Trump? Now, that is incredibly troubling, and it could also be a crime. Take a look at this very pertinent part of 18 U.S. Code 641, public money, property of records, whoever embezzles, steals, purloins, or knowingly converts to his use or the use of another, or without authority sells, conveys, disposes of any record, voucher, money, or anything of value of the United States or any department or agency thereof, or any property made or being made under contract for the United States or any department or agency thereof. Now, if those memos were classified, which several top legal experts are arguing they in fact were, Comey may have violated that law. And it's also likely that Comey created those memos on government computers, making it the property of the United States government, not J. Edgar Comey. And on top of all of that, there are non-disclosures and FBI rules that Comey also could be in violation of. And finally, Comey may have lied under oath about the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Now, take a look at what he said under oath back in July of 2016. This is important. We did not find evidence to indicate that they did the erasure to conceal things of, of any sort. We didn't find any evidence of evil intent, an intent to obstruct justice there. Uh, no intent. The email server in a, in a bathroom closet of a mom and pop shop with top secret special access program information? Really? Is that where it belongs? No intent? Seriously? To mishandle? Classified information, no intent by destroying 30 plus thousand emails. So last year, Comey testifies, again under oath, that there wasn't any attempt to obstruct justice in the Clinton email investigation. Yesterday, he said something entirely different. Watch this. The Clinton campaign at the time was using all kinds of euphemisms, security review, matters, things like that, for what was going on. We were getting to a place where the Attorney General and I were both going to have to testify and talk publicly about it. And I want to know, was she going to authorize us to confirm we had an investigation? And she said, yes, but don't call it that. Call it a matter. And I said, why would I do that? And she said, just call it a matter. Uh, just call it a matter? So it looks like Comey may have committed perjury as well, on top of everything else we're talking about.